Hello everyone, Poor Cynic here with Tab on Tire Interviews, and this is Pixaki by Riser. This is an iPad exclusive application specifically geared towards making pixel art. You know all those games from your childhood, if you're my age, or those retro looking games that are so popular on the indie front right now, if you're significantly younger than me. This app allows you to create art that would look at home in those kinds of games. And uh, as you can see here, this looks really nice. It's got a nice retro style to it. It looks like, you know, very arcade-esque, provided you know what an arcade is. Again, people my age, you younger folks, you might not know. But that being said, immediately right off the bat, we can see, or I want to demonstrate one of the problems I have with this, uh, with this application. I do have quite a few problems, but I also have quite a few uh, things I like about it. First off, the gallery itself, where you select your art here, um, first off, who's that handsome devil? Hey. Um, it lacks practicality. You can only look at three drawings at a time. You can't group them in any way. Like if you wanted to put uh, drawings of a similar nature or a similar subject into one sort of folder, you can't do that. You just have to swipe uh, until you find the thing you want. Uh, that That's... Uh, it's not a great system. I'd prefer to see something like you have in Procreate, which is another thing I reviewed but haven't done the video for yet, I'll get to that eventually, where you can actually group the drawings together into similar folders or files. That I really like. Um, another thing I have to mention while we're here is you can't duplicate projects from this screen, which is another issue I have. Like in something like Sketchbook Pro or Procreate, you could select one of these projects and you could basically duplicate it in case you wanted to keep a straight, clean original, uh, but have something you'd sort of edit. And that way you could uh, restore the original if anything went wrong. Uh, you can't really do that here, so that's kind of a pain in the rear. Um, but anyway, let's get into some of the other things about this. See, uh, very basic along the bottom here, you just have an info button. You, uh, which you can send feedback right on the app store. You can give this to a friend and you look at acknowledgements. Uh, the plus, that obviously adds a new piece of artwork. The box with the arrow out of it, that's obviously the export tool. And this is another thing that it's okay, but it has its issues. Let's, for example, uh, or the share button, I suppose it's called, sharing options. You have three options to choose from. You have the Pixaki file. You have a... PNG file, and you have a Photoshop file. Now, the PNG file and the Photoshop file, those are fine. Uh, I really like how you can also adjust the magnification because these are actually pretty small, or they can be pretty small drawings. They're basically pixel by pixel, um, so you can sort of amp them up. So times 12, it's now a 768 by 768, and you can go up pretty high. Um, but a .pixaki file, it lacks versatility. The only two things I could see the .pixaki file being useful for uh, because there is no, as I said, this is an iPad exclusive application, there is no desktop equivalent, would be either storage, like you export them to .pixaki and you store them on your computer so you don't have them all on your uh, tablet and then you, like I guess, re-upload your tablet as need be. Or uh, the thing they recommended on the App Store page, which is you can share .pixaki files with your friends. Like you email a .pixaki file to your friend as an attachment, and so you can edit the same drawing. I suppose that's a nice touch, but really it doesn't seem all that useful to me. I want to show one other thing which is both cool and not so cool. When you go to the Add uh, or Drawing, when you go to the Create New Drawing, button. You can see here it's organized by pixel size and it's sort of organized according to where they would f fit on the sliding technological st scale of, uh, in this case, Nintendo products and at the bottom Apple products, which is a very nice touch. It's very stylized. I like that. It's kind of, uh, that, that makes me laugh. But um, that being said, I don't like that canvas size are fixed. I would have liked the option to choose the size of my template. Um, you're just sort of limited to these sizes right here. And it's not a deal breaker, but it shows something that makes me go, oh, it's kind of a missed opportunity. And anyway, what's not going to one I've already started? Let's just start a brand new one. Let's start a small 32 by 32 pixel. All right, here we have the basic drawing template, as it were. And uh, this, this is where the application shines. This is its 
golden spot. This is the best part of it because it is very well, it is a very well put together program in terms of artistic functionality. Um, and it's just, it's really fun to mess around with. You can see here along the bottom, you have the, the first uh, thing here, the little squares or diamonds on top of each other. That just allows you to remove that, uh, this bar on the side here. And on the opposite side, the palette button allows you to do the uh, same thing. Though it is a little sensitive because of the uh, the way I'm propping up my iPad. It didn't respond immediately, which is another one of the problems. Sometimes there is an occasional lack of responsiveness, but again, not a deal breaker. Uh, you have the tap and drag to select. If I had anything on the field here, I could select it. I can cut it out. I can copy it. I can move it, which is another a nice touch. Uh, I copied nothing. Yes. Okay, fine. And we will mess around. Next, obviously, paint bucket. Paint bucket allows you to fill. Um, then we have the actual brush or pencil. And this is, obviously, it'll, it's what allows you to draw on the screen itself. There we are. Box, line, box. What am I drawing? I don't know. I'm messing around. Up, oh, up. Oh. And if you screw up, like I just did there, you can either use the eraser tool, like that, or you can use the undo button you can see at the very top there. And like that. That looks neat, sort of. And I guess go back to show off the fill tool. You can go like, meow. You know, that's how a fill tool works. Pretty obvious. Anyway, uh, you see here when I have the drawing or the pencil tool selected, you can select the size of the brush, which is another nice addition. So you see here is a 10 pixel size brush and it is big for for this size canvas. It's, it's, as I said before, it's 32 by 32 pixel. Uh, and then we get over to the the right side here. And we obviously have the eyedropper, which allows you to select the color you want. Um, running up and down along the side, we have the uh, the colors, but you can have far more colors than that. Click on the color tab there, and you can gain basically access to any color you can imagine. And you can get the hex code for it. So if you're somebody who works by hex codes, this is a very handy uh, handy little thing. So I just want to do that. And uh, let's go back to color. And hey, we have new color, which is very drab. And let's get rid of that. This is kind of pointless. But uh, yeah, that's how that works. Um, going back to the uh, left side here, if we want to add a new layer, it's as simple as that. We want to address the transparency. Do you do that with a little Pac-Man ghost? Ooh, spooky. Uh, anyway, yeah. If you want to adjust the layers, you tap and hold. Uh, you hold down and you shift, and you can move them around like that. Again, there's the responsiveness thing coming into play again. Um, some things I don't like about this, uh, I'm just going to be messing around, so pay attention to that or ignore me or what have you. Uh, I don't like that there is no sort of straight line or shape tools. Oops, forgot to readjust the size of the brush. Uh, that's kind of a, a pain in the ass, just because pixel art can be something that relies a lot on straight lines. Uh, as you can see here, I tried to draw a straight line and I completely fouled it up. But it looks okay. Yep, there we go again. Um, it's crazy craziness going on here. Um, and it's... Uh, I would have liked that option. Uh, and if you have any knowledge of pixel art, you know I'm completely doing this wrong. Pixel art is supposed to be something you kind of have to take your time on. You can't just go willy-nilly in like I can. Oh, I forgot to point out the zoom functionality. If you uh, pinch and spread your fingers, you can zoom in. And you can actually zoom in quite a ways. You can go all the way up to 25,000%. Basically, you're just looking at four pixels on the screen at one time with some outliers. A little bit more, but it's always going to snap to 25,000%. That is impressive. This is, it's very good for detail work. And you will always get that level of zoom regardless of what size uh, canvas you are using. Uh, you have 20 layers to work with, 
Uh, admittedly, you can't delete those layers, so if you screw up, you basically have to erase it and try it again, which, again, is another little irritating issue I'm not a fan of, but it doesn't kill it. It doesn't uh, destroy the app for me. This is still a very functional app. It's still a very uh, well-put-together app. It definitely has its flaws. It definitely has uh, problems. I will not deny that. But I, uh, I really quite like it. And so when we are done here, we can just go back to gallery. And if we want to rename it, we can go like that. And we can just say this is uh, thing one, because why not? And I already went over the uh, sharing exporting thing. So yeah, that pretty much covers that. I'm not going to deny that this flap has a lot of flaws. I've covered them pretty much in their entire uh, that being said, I don't feel like any of them uh, destroy the app. It's very, I, I really quite like this app. It's approachable, it looks great, and it gets the job done. I can't speak to how useful this program is going to be to someone who already knows how to craft pixel art. Uh, I am speaking from the point of view of a, of a dabbler, as I've mentioned before. I am just someone who likes to draw, who likes a bit of art, but is not in it for any sort of professional sense. Uh, newbies to the field and wide scale dabblers like me may very well find this useful for broadening their tool sets in regards to creating digital art. When you want to do art, even if it's just sort of a hobby, it's helpful to have as many tools in your toolbox as possible. And uh, the, the iOS allows for that. You know, this uh, tablets are great for that, or they can be great for that. As of the recording of this video, Pixaki runs for $4.99 in the US App Store. If you have any interest in creating pixel art but haven't really found the best way to dip your toe in the water, this is definitely an app you should pick up. Um, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's it's pretty darn good for what it is. So I've been Poor Cynic with Tab and Time Reviews. Ta-ta and farewell. <laughs>